In order to get started learning about HTML, we are going to be using some very basic HTML. We're not going to be getting into all the ins and outs of how to actually structure a page. So what we're going to be using for this week is we're going to be using CodePen. CodePen.io is a place that we can use as a coding playground, if you will. It will allow us to be able to create little code snippets and to be able to view what they look like without having to add all of the granular details that we might normally need when we're creating an HTML page. So let me just show you how you can get up and running in CodePen. We're not going to talk about every single thing, but I am going to let you know how you can sign up for a free account and how you can create a pen, which is simply a little project inside of CodePen that you can use. In addition to being able to create these pens, you can also share your pens in your code pen profile and you can make tweaks and changes to the code as you please along with sharing these types of items with other people and be able to give and get feedback. In addition, any change that you make to a pen will be updated in real time. So it will allow us to really easily be able to see exactly what we're creating. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. If you have not signed up for a CodePen account, you'll need to sign up. The process is pretty straightforward. You can go ahead and sign up with Twitter, GitHub, Facebook, or with your email. So you can choose and I'll just sign up with my email. You're going to need to enter your name and you'll have to choose a username and you'll have to enter your email and add a password. So I'm just going to fill in these details and I'll go ahead and click submit. And that is pretty much it. I have gone ahead and set up my account within CodePen. And as soon as you set up an account, you will be greeted with this little tour. So if you want to go through the tour, I would encourage you to do that. I'm going to go ahead and close this. So when you first get into CodePen, you're going to be greeted with these panes. Up at the top, we have an HTML pane, a CSS pane, and a JavaScript pane. And then at the bottom, we have the area that is going to display whatever it is that we create within these panes. So for this part of our class, we're only going to be working with HTML. We don't really need these other panes and you are able to grab these panes and just kind of like tuck them away, make them smaller so that you have more real estate for the other panes. And you can always come back and adjust those if you need to, but I'll just tuck away my CSS and JavaScript pane. Now, the cool thing about CodePen is you don't have to do all of the, the normal setup that we would be creating on our own computers. We can actually just start writing code. So if I go ahead and make an H1 tag, which allows me to make a heading, I can go ahead and write the opening tag and then follow that by a closing tag. And we'll go ahead and talk about what the tags mean shortly. So don't worry too much about that. But as soon as I write something, you can see that down here below, in the display pane, whatever I write is showing up and that's going to happen in real time. So if I write some more text, as soon as I finish writing my text, it's going to show up down here at the bottom. So this is a great way that you can actually view the code that you're, you're writing and right away it's going to show up for you. Let me just show you a couple of other little details that are going to be important to you. You may want to go into settings and you can go ahead and title your settings. So this will give you the opportunity to name your pen. So if I wanted to just say example 01, I could name this. I could give it a description if I wanted to, and you could go ahead and actually tag it as well. I'm not going to worry about any of those things. It is worth noting that you do have some other settings here. So if we go to the HTML setting, this is where you can specify things about HTML. There are things called HTML preprocessors, which we're not going to be getting into, so you don't need to worry about these. And you can automatically have it like add classes or automatically add additional comments for the head tag. This is all a little bit more advanced, so don't worry about it. You also have settings that you can specify for CSS and for JavaScript. I am going to simply leave everything at the default. 
but I did want to show you where you could name your pen title. And I want you to go to the behavior tab. And this is where you have the option to turn on auto save, which will save your pen every 30 seconds. That's pretty helpful. You can also have it automatically update, just like I was showing you here. And you can go ahead and you can choose to have your code be formatted when you save your pen. I'm just going to leave this off. So again, I'm just going to leave these at the default settings. If we go to the editor, this is where you can control how your code is going to display within these panes. So you can adjust your code indentation by either spaces or tabs. And when you start adding more code and nested code, it can be really helpful to have your code indented. So let me close this for a second. And I'm just going to write some additional code. So once again, don't worry too much about what this means. We will be covering that soon enough. So I have written a little nested snippet of code and I didn't have to do anything special for the indentation. CodePen knows that when I'm creating something called a nested tag, it should be indented from its parent. And if we go back to our settings and we go into the editor, you can choose how you want to indent. So spaces right now it's set to two. If I increase this to let's say six and we click save and close, you will now see that my code is going to have more indentations. It's actually adding six spaces. So clearly this is personal preference. If you find it easier to have a little bit more spacing than is set by default, you can certainly increase that indentation spacing. I find it to be a little bit helpful. It can take up more visual space, but since we're not going to be creating anything too complicated, I think it's probably worthwhile to just incorporate this indentation. In addition, you can also go ahead and have your pens be turned into templates. We're not going to worry about this. And then some of these features are for the pro version of CodePen. So we didn't talk about that, but there is a pro version of CodePen which would involve you paying and you have some additional features. Again, we don't need those. So I'm just going to go ahead and make these changes that I just showed you. I'll click save and close to save those. And you can see that it went ahead and saved my pen. And if we go to this little icon right here, this allows us to change our view. So this can be helpful because you can change your view right now. All my code panes are at the top and the visual display pane is at the bottom. But let's say I wanted the code panes over here on the left and the visual display pane on the right, I can make that change. And as I mentioned before, you can adjust this so you can really customize it. For what we're doing here, I'm going to work in this particular type of layout. I like to have my code over here on the left and my display on the right, but this is clearly personal preference and you can certainly go ahead and, and change this at any time. It is possible for you to pin items, which means they'll kind of be saved in your pin area. We don't really need that for right now. We can love an item. So if you find a pen that you really like, you might want to kind of save it and like it. And I'll show you that in just a second. You probably don't need to do that for your own pens, but when you find other people's pens, that might be helpful. And then you have your ability to actually go ahead and manage your own code pen account. So if you go to your work, it's going to show you all of your pens. So you can see I have example one. That's the only pen I've made so far. So it's the only pen that's going to be saved here, but this is where you'll be able to access any work that you do. In addition to that, we have the option to create a new pen, a new project, and don't worry so much about these, the difference between these and a new collection. We also have an asset manager and, you know, some other things that are, are not going to be terribly important for us. I do want to bring your attention to the settings option. If we click this, we can further customize how CodePen is going to work for us. In addition, this would be where you could upload a profile image. So if you want to change your profile image, you would just need to meet the specifications and then navigate and upload that image. You can add some other information about yourself. If you have additional profile links that you want to add, you can do that. 
and really you can just come in here and kind of manage your account. But one of the things that I want to show you is if you go to editor preferences, this is where you will be able to set certain choices in regards to the colors, the font sizes, things like that. So I'm in the HTML tab and each of these tabs is going to display what colors are going to be shown to represent the various items that are, are being seen on the screen. So we'll just focus on HTML and you can see that there's some different colors. Currently, I am using this twilight theme and there's dark themes and light themes. If I click any of these other choices, you can see that the colors that the text is shown and even the background is going to change based on whatever your preference is. You can go ahead and you can change how this might look so that things stand out better for you. If you prefer to work with a light colored background, you certainly can choose one of the light themes. If you would rather work in the dark theme arena, you could do that. So I think I'm just going to go to the high contrast dark theme because I think that everything stands out a little bit more. You can see that some of my code is yellow, some is teal, some is white, and some is kind of a light gray. So these all mean different things. The yellow is part of the element. The white is part of an attribute and the teal is part of a value. And again, don't worry so much about the terminology. We will be diving into this, but I did want to show you how you can change this. And if you want to use the same one I'm using, I'm going to be using high contrast dark. In addition to that, you can also change the font. So if you don't want to use this Monaco font, you can see that there's all sorts of different fonts that you can change and potentially have your code display in. I am kind of fine with the Monaco, so I'm just going to leave that, but obviously you can certainly display this in whatever font family works best for you. You can also increase the font size. So like if I pump this up to 18, you can see that all of my code is now a little bit bigger. I think that I'll probably just put this at 16. It was at 15 before, so maybe just make it a tiny bit bigger. And this is another place where you can adjust your code indentation. I thought we had changed that to six, but let me just do it here and, and we'll save so that I have a little bit more indentation. And then there's, there's other options that are going to be a little bit more advanced. One of the things that I do want you to change is I want you to make Emmet inactive, which means that that Emmet is going to be turned off. And we will talk about Emmet a little bit later on in the class. It is a way that it can kind of help you to code, but in the beginning, it might be a little bit confusing because you need to understand what all of the terminology is before you can really start using that. So let's make sure that you turn Emmet off. And those are the only settings I really want you to make changes to. And obviously, you know, the syntax highlighting and the font sizing is, is up to you, whatever is your preference in regards to working. But I did want to point out the changes that I'm making so that if you are wondering why mine might look a little bit different than yours, this is the reason. And we don't have to do anything. Once we make these changes, they're going to just kind of kick in. So I'm done with that. I am going to go back to my work. And if we go ahead and click on example one, you can see that those changes have been implemented. I also want to point out that if we go to the profile area, this is where your information is going to be displayed. Your avatar, if you updated it, would be changed here. And you can also go ahead and manage your pens. So some people might have a lot of pens and this is a place where you can manage that. Now, if we go back to trending over here on the left, you will find other people's pens that are available for you to check out. So lots of people put their pens up here and it has all kinds of really advanced features. Many of them do. You don't have to create advanced features, but some of these examples are going to incorporate a lot more than HTML. They're going to have CSS and JavaScript and whatever. You can actually click on any of these things and you can look at them. So if you wanted to like check this out, you could go ahead and you could see how they created it. You could actually see the exact code that they used and you can go ahead and you can 
do something called forking this project. So if you forked this project, it means that you're taking a copy of this and saving it to your CodePen account, and then you can go ahead and make changes in it. So if I wanted to fork this, let's say, and now I have my own copy of this and I could name this something like Emily's to-do list. And you can see that those updates are going to show. And in this case, I would need to save the forked pen that's not on by default. So I would have to click save, it saves it. And now if we go back to my work, you can see that I have this pure CSS to-do, this copy of someone else's code pen and now I've kind of customized it. I'm not going to keep this so I'm going to go to these three little dots right here. I'm going to click delete just to get rid of this and it is going to warn me, hey, this is what happens. You know, if you delete it, I'm going to click fine. I understand and I will delete it. And you can see that I just have my example one. So if I ever wanted to go back to the file that we were originally working on, we can go ahead and click that and it will open and now I can edit it and continue to work on it. So for what we're gonna be doing this week, this is a great place where we, as I mentioned, are not gonna to need to include every little granular thing. I'm just gonna be introducing you to some basic HTML. So this is kind of like a nice little sandbox or a playground that we can use, that we can be able to create some HTML and instantly see what that HTML looks like. So if you have not done so, please go ahead and sign up for a CodePen account. It is free. It only takes a few minutes to sign up and then you'll be all ready to get started.